Welcome everyone to the Sunday edition of the God Minute we call Breaking Open the Word. I'm Father Michael. Beloved of God, today marks on our liturgical uh, church calendar the third Sunday in ordinary time. Now, the gospel that's chosen for today is taken from the gospel of St. Luke. We begin with the uh, first chapter, verses 1 through 4, and then uh, it skips to the fourth chapter, verses 14 to 21, but you'll understand that when we talk about it. So let's just take a moment to place ourselves in the presence of the Lord and um, ask him to quiet our hearts so that we can listen to the Lord and the passage from sacred scripture that, have, that has been chosen for us today. Since many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as those who were eyewitnesses from the beginning and ministers of the word have handed them down to us, I too have decided, after investigating everything accurately anew, to write it down in an orderly sequence for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may realize the certainty of the teaching you have received. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Holy Spirit, and news of him spread throughout the whole region. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by all. He came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me, to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What a beautiful passage and how interestingly we choose uh, from two separate chapters and kind of blend them together for uh, today's reflection for us. And there's a good reason why, and, and I hope to be able to try and enlighten us a little bit in our, in our uh, discussion today. I wanna first start out by telling you that there was a, a college student uh, who was home for the holidays and was coming out of the church. The priest, as was his custom, was standing at the door, shaking hands with people as they left the church. Seeing the college student, he grabbed him by the hand and pulled him aside. Then the priest said to him, you need to join the army of the Lord. The young man replied, I'm already in the army of the Lord, Father. The priest questioned him, Well, how come I don't see you except at Christmas and Easter? And the young man whispered back, I'm in the secret service. <laughs> what a good response for those of you who are CNE Catholics. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Anyway, in the gospel today, we learn of Luke's desire to compile the events that took place surrounding Jesus and his ministry. He does so in order to show the certainty of the mission of Jesus Christ, as he has seen and discovered, so that we may have faith in Christ Jesus who came to save us. Now, Luke spends time not just giving his own eyewitness account, but tells us that it's the eyewitness of those 
who have handed down the word and have ministered to us. Moreover, he's made every effort to investigate every little detail accurately and place it in an ordered fashion that might make sense to all of us. Well, at least now we have a a better understanding of why and how the gospel was written and uh, the events Luke chose to include in his gospel. The passage chosen for us today then skips to the fourth chapter, which follows all those events we have marked and celebrated, like Advent, Christmas, Mary, Joseph, John the Baptist, the birth of Jesus, his adolescence, and the beginning of Jesus's ministry. So all of those have been celebrated and included in the scriptures, but today kind of moves us forward. When arriving in the temple on the Sabbath, Jesus was handed a scroll which contained scripture passages. So he unrolled the scroll and begins to read from the prophet Isaiah the fulfillment of the prophecy, namely the mission that Jesus Christ has, that he as the anointed one, the Messiah, will bring good news to the poor. He will proclaim liberty to captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and let the oppressed go free, announcing a year of favor from the Lord. Now, you and I have heard this passage more than a few times, right? And we know that Jesus is the anointed one, the Messiah. We've read in the scriptures where he has lifted up the lowly and the poor. We know he has uh, given sight to those who were blind. And gave the lame the ability to walk again. We begin to realize that each person on earth is oppressed by their own sins and his death and resurrection sets us free. Most importantly, we realize that in the prophecy, we obtain the outline of our own mission. You see, as followers of Jesus Christ, we who have been anointed on the day of our baptism are called to bring glad tidings to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to allow the oppressed to go free and proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. We're called to use not only our gifts and talents, but our faith, our hope, and above all, our love to serve our brothers and sisters in whatever situation they may be in. It's not with our words, but rather with our lived example that we announce a year of favor from the Lord. And you and I are leading the way to make that happen. Last week in the gospel, do you remember the words spoken by Jesus' mother, Mary? She said, turning to the servants at the wedding feast at Cana, Do whatever he tells you, referring to Jesus, of course. And for me, I believe these profound words are good advice for all of us to follow in trying to live a year of favor from the Lord. I believe Mary's words speak directly to what the Lord desires from each one of us. Our faith needs to be shared. And our world needs to experience the blessings we have been given. This is no time to be a a member of the secret service of the Lord. (laughs) Instead, it's an opportunity for us to be visibly present in our world. To work together and pray for each other as we try to model our Savior. This is an opportunity for us to take up the role that we've been given and to go out and imitate Christ in everything we do. No, you may not be able to restore sight to a blind person, but a doctor may be able to. You may not be able to have the means to care for somebody poor because you yourself might be poor, but you can pray for them. You can raise them up. You can help them to see the goodness of who they are. 
you may not be able to help the lame to walk, but you may be able to assist someone who struggles each day to walk. Brothers and sisters, I I think the Lord is calling us to turn things around in the year 2022 and to really put our faith into action, our hope as that which leads us and our love as that which feeds our brothers and sisters. Let's do what we can to, to make every effort to hear that prophetic uh, word of Isaiah and as Jesus spoke it, be able to say with the Lord, today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless you, brothers and sisters. We'll see you tomorrow. To bring glad tidings to the lowly, to heal the broken heart, he has a To proclaim liberty to captives, release to prisoners, he has anointed me. The Spirit of God is upon me. To comfort those who mourn, he has anointed me. To give to them the oil of gladness and share a mantle of joy, he has anointed The Spirit of God is upon